In this video, I want to show you how to replace that piston with a TXV metering device. The first thing that you'll need to do is turn the power off to the system and recover the refrigerant out of the unit. Or what you can do is, with the power off, shut the liquid line and the vapor line service valves and just recover the refrigerant in the line set connecting to this coil and the refrigerant in the coil itself. After you recovered the refrigerant down to, say, zero PSI, then you can go ahead and disconnect your piston chamber and pull out the piston. Then you can take a piece of thermostat wire with a little bent end on the, on the very edge, and you can go ahead and just pull out the piston, remove this cap. Make sure the TXV is rated for the correct refrigerant in the system. So at the outdoor unit, it says we have R4 tonight, and so this is an R4 tonight TXV. And also make sure that this rating, so this rating is 18,000 to 36,000 BTUs is covering whatever the BTU size of the outdoor unit is. In that case, it's 24,000 BTUs, so we are good. We're gonna go ahead and put in a new Teflon ring. Of course, in our case, we're just putting in this used TXV, but in the field, you're gonna be replacing this with a new one. Once again, up here, you're gonna to wanna to replace this ring with a new one. We're also gonna bend this down because we are up a little bit higher now. Maybe I'll bend this down a little bit more. As you're tightening, make sure to not nick any of the capillary lines. And you also want to make sure that your TXV is going to stay within the cabinet. You're going to want to install the external equalizer line. And so you could put a little bit of nylog on the flare face, or you can just go ahead and tighten this in because the copper actually acts as the bushing. And so we can go ahead and snug that in. I'm going to hold my wrench down low because this is not a short wrench. You don't want to over tighten. You also don't want to crack that braze joint right there. If you don't have a quarter inch flare connection, you're going to need to basically make a hole in the suction line and go ahead and braze your external equalizer into that hole. So you can just use a file and then a little punch in order to uh, punch yourself a hole. Heat the pipe up, and then after that, you can heat the external equalizer line and insert it and just put one little dab of braze on it, and that should do it. You want to make sure to not put too much braze in because you don't want that to flow up inside the external equalizer tube. We're going to attach our copper strapping with our stainless steel bolts. So what we're doing is we are mounting the bulb onto the suction line. If this suction line was bigger than this size right here, which is three quarter, then we would want to put it either on say 10 o'clock or two o'clock or whatever, but right here on the top is okay. Plus we, we don't have much room. We can't slide it back because so we're gonna hit the coil. We slide it forward, we're gonna be in the, in the way of the door. We don't wanna tighten it down too, too hard until we get our second clamp on. We can use a wrench to hold it in place. We want to make sure that our external equalizer line right here is not rubbing up against anything. So we could put a little piece of foam on here in order to, to stop any rubbing from occurring. You want to make sure that this is tight to where you can't move it with your hand. Worst case scenario, you could use a hose clamp, but you don't want to over tighten these. Uh, so you can use stainless steel clamps on copper as well. You don't really have a dissimilar metal reaction or anything like that, so it should be good. Now, I like to have that external equalizer downstream from the bulb, but some manufacturers actually have it before. It just, just depends. But if you're installing it in the field, you should definitely put the external equalizer downstream of the bulb. And after you install the bulb, you're going to want to put insulation around that uh, just to make sure that you're truly sensing the temperature on that vapor line. And so you can put that tape on and put zip ties on, or you could also use cork tape instead. After you put this together, you'd pressure test it, and then you'd check the uh, joints right here with bubble leak detector. After pressure testing, if you don't have any leaks, you can go ahead and release the nitrogen, vacuum the system, and you can weigh in the correct amount of refrigerant back into the system. So that would be the same amount of refrigerant that you recovered out. And then after that, you're gonna turn the system on and check the system's refrigerant charge with the subcooling method. And that's on the small liquid line, and you measure the saturated temperature. So you measure the pressure on the liquid line, convert it to saturated temperature, and then you take that minus the line temperature. So if this was 100 degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the outdoor coil, and on the line it was 90 degrees, then you have 10 degrees of subcooling. And so the refrigerant charge will be correct. 
Then you will go ahead and measure your superheat. You should have anywhere between say eight to 12 degrees, but really maybe say seven to 14 degrees is still okay as your total superheat measured on your large vapor line at the outdoor unit. If you wanna learn more about superheat and subcoiling, make sure to check out our books, the refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning. So we have a thousand question workbook that goes along with that book. We also have quick reference cards and they're all available over at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.